Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. Come on, fight back. Fight back, man. Fight back. Gotta fight back, man. Fight back. Hello, once again, YouTube. Welcome back. I got my pal, good pal, good longtime friend Funnikin here. He's gonna be my guinea pig while I test the clone moves on him. And if he takes any serious injuries, I'll heal him. Oh, check this out, by the way. When did you get it, though? Today. <laughs> Literally useless. Hey. First skill, clone jutsu. Very simple. It's not shadow clone. Oh, I have to get substitution first. Uh -huh. Clone jutsu, very simple. Like I said, it's not anything interesting, but you do... It's, it's kind of like pseudo teleportation, because if you use it, and then you leave that there, and you go to a different spot, and then you right-click over the skill in your hotbar you take the place of the clone and it's it's not really a clone at any time it's you're kind of like in the middle of being a clone and not being a clone because regardless of whether you or your clone gets hit you go back to where your clone is or the your real self is so like i'm would you would say i'm in my clone right now right but uh if i have my uh, buddy pal buddy friend pal fun here hit me Well, that's not supposed to happen, but you get what I mean. <laughs> and then there's transformation jutsu, which I believe doesn't work. Uh, so it's a waste of skill point. Don't get it. It's useless. But we'll try it anyway. Transformation. Uh, 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 transformation uh, doesn't really truly really work. Hmm, crazy. It's kind of like how I almost said it didn't work. And then Genjutsu release is basically, well, we don't have any Genjutsu users here, but say you, s I might put up a clip or something, but when someone has a Genjutsu casted on them, you'll see little white particles flow from their head. If you see that, it's, it's not practical at all. Don't do this. It's not worth it. You're, you're wasting your time. Genjutsu doesn't last that long anyway. You walk up to your target and then you click on them with Genjutsu release and it'll get them out of the Genjutsu. But the longest Genjutsu is like Tsukuyomi. You probably won't notice they're in a Genjutsu in time anyway, so don't bother leaving this in your hotbar. What you really want is Genju Genjutsu reverse, which is great. Basically, whenever you activate this skill, it, has, it goes on a, like a 60 second cooldown and the next Genjutsu that's casted on you gets reflected back onto the caster except for Kodomatsukami, which is I, I supposed to be a Genjutsu, but eh. But it it'll even reflect Sugiyomi, which is, is, is kind of dumb, but you know, I'm not gonna complain. Next skill is Shadow Clone, definitely a very good uh, distraction and support skill, especially if you're getting 2v1s or something. Use Shadow Clone, and then let's, let's see if my man's here gets finesse properly. Go for it. takes one hit now we can look at the clone jutsu upgrade hit that clone for me hit, hit. all right useless cool uh, there's a shadow clone upgrade one all right you're getting boxed fight back please oh one hit Still getting boxed. Two hits. All right. Next upgrade. Each of these costs one skill point, so they're really cheap, which is really nice. We'll wait on the cooldown. See if transformation will work. Nope. Useless. As I said before. Shadow clone. Third upgrade. Hmm. Still alive. Oh, how many hits was that? Like four. That's four hits. Last upgrade. Yeah, four hits. It's not bad. So that could be really annoying, actually, if you're fighting somebody, especially someone like Arena, and they just pop a Shadow Clone and dash back, and then you have to deal with their Shadow Clone while they're like healing or something or getting their chakra back. So here, last Shadow Clone upgrade. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, six hits. That thing lasts six hits. That thing is tanky. It doesn't even cost that much chakra, and I almost have it back already. Actually, that's kind of it's kind of good. Actually, how, how much? One, two, three, four, five. That's five school points in total to have a beefy clone. I, I that might be worth it, honestly. Don't be flung off the cliff, bro. Oh, which one's the real one? There you go. And then, no, nah, we'll do this one first. Shuriken upgrade. Oh, before I get this, okay. So, I have Shuriken equipped. We'll see how much damage it does. Oh, hold on, are you? I can't even tell if you're max HP. There you go. So my shurikens do how much damage? I throw three at once. 22 damage in total. Yeah, so seven damage each shuriken. Or seven, like, it's like 7.1 or something like that. 7.3, yeah. And then you get the shuriken upgrade. Which now does uh, supposedly 50% 50, 50 more damage, so it should do like 33 now. No? Okay. Useless? They're lying to us? It's propaganda. Extended clip. I test this out, but I'm not at a village to hold more stuff right now, so I'm not even going to bother buying this skill, but I assume it just gives you double the ammo capacity, so instead of being able to hold 18 shuriken, I'd be able to hold 36. Shuriken fan, which I believe is a jutsu. And not a passive. Yeah, and that does good damage. How much damage that do? That could, I can see your health when I do this, by the way. You don't need to tell me. Uh, that's okay, damage. Let me try again. Well, it doesn't do anything if I miss. Explosive fan. You might want to get away from the edge for this one. There you go. <laughs> so obviously, if you were wondering what that skill is, that's what it is. It shoots a bunch of explosive kunai right at your opponent. If you land most of them, uh, you'll be doing Good damage, especially if you use a ragdoll move like the uh, like the Emi Genjutsu, I think. And then you just throw some explosive fans on them. God, that's terrifying. Bootleg Akafura. Next skill, we'll move on to this last part of the skill tree. Shadow Shuriken, which multiplies your kunai and shuriken. So at first I thought what this skill did was it just gave you more ammo but what it does is when you activate it it shoots out multiple of whatever you throw seventy three damage and that's I, I have one I have no I have no kunai training by the way that did seventy three damage from using one kunai if you train your uh Kunai skill tree or whatever or uh, Kunai stat. I mean, you'll be doing hella damage, especially if you get them ragdolled or stunned or something. Or like you use, you go into ceiling and you get like expel, not not expel, you get chain seal, trap them. You know, switch over to your shuriken, do shadow shuriken. See, I increased my stats to do like double damage for throwing weapons. It's doing 120 damage with shuriken alone. Now imagine I did that with Explosive Kunai. The possibilities are endless. And then next you've got Body Flicker. We'll yeah, go with this one. Yeah, this is personally one of my favorite moves in the skill tree because it straight up just gives you... Oh, hold on. I gotta turn it on first. It straight up just gives you Gate Dashes, pretty much. It's different. It's kind of like... If you ever played Rogue Lineage, it's kind of like D-Sage Dashes where you use 
mana to dash and then once you dash three or four times it goes on dash cooldown for like about five seconds and then you can dash again so say you pair this up with like body flicker or something not body flicker flash flicker even in a pd with you know z ranks and stuff they're going to be having a hard time catching up to you unless they're like obito sharingan or shisui sharingan with advanced body flicker or like seventh gates but yeah, if you if you're looking for you know fast movement speed and you don't want to train your speed stat and you don't want to and you're not a Taijutsu user and you don't want to get flash flicker as your forbidden jutsu and you're already using clone skill tree, body flicker is definitely the way to go. But you won't see a lot of people with it because it's kind of mid. And then the last tree, the last skill in the tree is flicker clones. And you'll notice it might seem familiar. Let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. Oh, fight, fight back, fight back, fight back, Gotta fight back, man. Fight back. <laughs> and, you know, they're all attack your opponent really quickly. They rush them. It can be easily countered, say you, you jump up here or something, but, oh. So you jump up here. Like if I had used the clones down there and Fonakin jumped up here, the clones wouldn't be able to get to him, essentially making it useless, but it depends on the terrain that you're fighting on and how smart the person is that you're fighting. But it's a great distraction. It does okay damage and you can go in for some M1s as well. Like come here. All right, let's fight real fast and I'll try to use the clone skill tree to the best of my ability. Don't fall off the edge. <laughs> Alright, go. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh no. See what I mean? It essentially makes it useless. If you stayed up there, you, you wouldn't have a problem. Somebody low, almost. Yeah, let's keep stacking them up. My flicker clones is almost off cooldown. No, don't do it. Oh, that's really smart.
Anyway, he's he's like he's like D, so you know, cut him some slack. But that's just me purely using the Colin skill tree. You can pair this up with anything else to make your build really good. I've seen some Rinas, I've seen some Akafuras, I've seen some Hoshigakis, all using the clone skill tree with like Shadow Clones and Flicker Clones. Like, don't sleep on this skill tree. It's it's really nice. It's in the game for a reason. But that's the whole skill tree. If you want to know more, want to see more, please leave a like. You know, it's not too hard. As long as you like the video, you should like the video. And, you know, sub, sub, you know, sub, not hard. You know how it is, sub. Just sub. <laughs>